Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video tutorial from Blender HD. My name is Jonathan Lampel, and in this video, I'm going to take you through how to create this node group in which you get this really sweet stipple painting type effect. So the way this works is we have an input image here. Then we're going to define our textures. So we have a dark texture, a midtone texture, and a light texture. We combine them. We add some lines and we're good to go. So this is a pretty sweet effect and works really great and totally customizable in any way. Uh, however, after I finished recording this video, the tutorial portion of it anyway, uh, I went back and I made it quite a few adjustments actually. And let me just show you what I did. So I created this group node, which took quite a bit more work. You can see there's a lot more math involved to make it as simple and easy to use as possible. And there are groups inside of groups and it all works fantastically well but the backbone of it is the same as I will show you in the video. So this node group is going to be on sale at the Blender Market if you'd like to purchase it just for convenience sake. What I'll show you in the tutorial will totally give you the tools to make it on your own. However, you will have to spend a little bit more time figuring out the math of making all of these values work well together. So you can totally recreate it yourself for completely free. I'm not holding anything back. However, if you would like to purchase it just for convenience or you don't want to go through the whole making of portion of it and you want to get the results right away, that's totally cool. And you can find this in the link down below. So let me run through really quick just to show you exactly what this does. So you saw earlier that we can take in an image and output a stipple painting effect. And this is super cool. And there's a few other options here as well. So of course we can change the scale of the dots and no matter how big this is, you're still going to get all of your details, which is super cool. So we have that. We also have an input for our shades of color, also for your tints. So the highlights and the midtones and shadows are separated out and this can be pretty sweet. You can make some cool colorized effects. Below that we have our highlight value, so that just determines how bright we want our highlights. Pretty standard, also a highlight spread to determine where we want our highlights. A mid-tone value. Also right below that we have a shadow pass, which is completely optional. You can see we have our shadows here and they work quite well already. However, you might want to input the shadow pass to more clearly define where your shadows are. So since we have that information, you may as well put it into Blender anyway, and that'll help more clearly define where we want our dark spots. But even if you don't have that, you can see shadows still work completely well to determine where we want the dark parts of the image. You can change the value of the shadow, as you can see there. And you can also determine the spread of the shadow. So that's pretty sweet. Let's plug that shadow pass back in so it looks a little bit better. We also have an ambient occlusion pass. So that really helps define the forms if you happen to have that. And that, of course, has a factor slider as well. And lastly, we have our lines here. And so let me just switch over to our line output and show you what that does. So first of all, we have a line weight. So just how much lines we have. We also have a line thickness. So you can play around with this to get some really cool sketch type effects with no other input necessary. But of course, you can also put in your own freestyle just in case uh, so you can more clearly define where those lines are and it looks really cool. You also have a line fill, which just sort of fills in some of these faces and it's pretty sweet and I'll show you a real example of this. So let's take out all this and I'm gonna use a previous render that I made quite a while ago this image here. So all I have is the image. I don't have anything else, any other passes or anything. So let's just plug that into the image. And let's adjust this as fast as we can to see if we can get a good result. So it looks like we need more highlights. So let's turn that up. We also don't want the lines to be quite so obvious. So let's turn both of those down. Also, our mid-tone value is looking pretty good, but we have too much shadow. So let's turn that down. And very quickly, we have a cool black and white painted effect. Of course, we can also plug this in for the shade. And now we have a colored effect. So this is looking really sweet. And we can animate it for video if we wanted to with this pattern offset. So the noises and all 
constant. It could look like a, you know, grain or whatever. And we also have an output for tritone. So this means that the blacks are completely black, the highlights are completely white, but everything in the middle has a color. So that's really neat. And lastly, we have our lines. So again, you can see exactly what this is doing. We have a sweet sketch effect, but also this line fill can get you some pretty cool comic book like effects really quickly. So this is what this node group does and the majority of it I'm going to show you right now. So let's get right into it. So inside of Blender, all that I've done to get us started, so we don't waste any time, is I have a scene here, super simple with just a cube, a monkey, and a backdrop. And I've enabled shadow and ambient occlusion passes in the layers panel here. So to get right into it, the first thing that we need to do to drive the actual dots part of the node is create a texture and that's going to create those little dots. So in the textures panel, I'm just going to create a new texture and instead of image removal, we're going to use Voronoi. And what this does is creates a texture with a bunch of little cells here. And I need to make these into dots. So to do that, I'm going to adjust these color settings. So let's turn the brightness up to 1.5 and you can see by doing that, we now have our dots, but they're a bit too bright. So let's also increase the contrast. I'm going to turn that up to two. So that's all good. And now under here in the Voronoi settings, there's a few things that I can tweak. I'm not going to do anything with the feature weights. I'm actually going to turn the intensity down to 0.5. So if you want more um, specific dots, you can leave that at one or turn it up. But I find that that's too far away for me. So I'm going to turn it down to 0.5. However, if you want them that far away, by all means, you can leave it at one. Uh, also, I'm going to turn this from actual distance to distance squared. And so that'll give us darker dots and also change the size from 0.25 down to 0.1. So now we have our little dots and we can use that to start making our texture. So before we jump into the compositor, actually, I want to change this name here to dots. So we know which one it is for organizational purposes. And now we can go shift A, add input, and texture. So now we can choose dots. And if we press control shift, click, we can now see the result. And so it's actually still too big. So let's turn that down to 0.01. Sweet. But now they're a bit stretched the long ways on the X direction. So let's actually turn the X direction up. And now we have our dots. So this is cool, but we might want to control how thick these dots are or how far apart they're spaced. So to do that, I'm just going to add an RGB curves right here. And now you can see that as you change the black level, the dots get darker. And as you change the white level, they become spaced farther apart and become a little bit smaller as well. So I'm going to leave that there and that's going to be our midtones. So let's take those two, shift D to duplicate them up, move that out of the way. And so these ones are on top are going to be our shadows. So you can press control shift, view that. And let's turn the black level up like so. And also drag that down a bit. And so these can be our shadows. And if you want them spaced farther apart, you can change the white level if you'd like. Or of course, play around with this curve in, in any way that you want. But for now, those are going to be our shadows. So now we need a way to combine the two. And the way I'm going to do that is actually using a mix node right here. So now this factor controls what's dark and what's white. So now we take this image and we need to find a way to define, oh, I guess I didn't hit F12 around yet. Uh, we need a way to define what's dark and what's not dark. Okay, now we have our image. And so first of all, I'm going to actually add a vector normalize. And what this is going to do is change it not only to a black and white image, but also map the values from zero to one. 
so there's no negative pixels in the image there's nothing over one it just maps it out so that there's no way out their numbers and they're all going to be contained between zero and one and that way it'll just help our process be a little bit more smooth not completely necessary but it's definitely helpful so first I'm going to add another RGB curves plug that in the image and now we can see that if we increase the black level that's going to increase the darkness of our shadows but then most importantly I want to decrease the white level and that's going to completely blow out everything that's not a shadow right so now we have exactly where our shadows are which is super cool but these values are going to be way out of proportion remember we want to keep them between 0 and 1 for this so I'm actually going to add another mix node right here and just plug that into the second input and just hit clamp and so that's going to convert everything from these way out of proportion numbers to between 0 and 1 and I can just minimize that because from now on I don't need to see it anymore so this is very cool but we might want to add in remember our shadow pass and any ambient occlusion pass so let's add in another mix node and you can see if we plug in our shadow pass we now have that there and I'm going to set that to multiply and you can change the factor of how much shadow pass you want added right there so to do that with the ambient occlusion mask I'm just gonna duplicate that plug in the ambient excuse me ambient occlusion and now we have exactly where we want our shadows to be so I'm going to take that you can see we have our mix node there plug that right into the factor and now we have our shadows and I'm gonna press shift space so we can see everything a bit more clearly now you can go in and define exactly how you want your shadows to look so you can play around with it however you'd like uh, these black and white levels are definitely helpful so for now that looks pretty good and let's go ahead and make the highlights so we're gonna, going to do that in a very similar way I'm going to take these two and duplicate them shift D but now I'm going to edit this so we want our highlights so we don't want them too much darker but we do want them a lot more spaced out so let's turn that way down there and maybe not quite so harsh let's turn that back down again and maybe the white one up a little bit you can see with doing this manually it does take a bit of tweaking okay so that looks pretty good for our highlights and so let's take another mix node and mix these two together okay so again this controls exactly how much highlights we have and we need something to determine where those highlights are so we're just gonna add another RGB curves again just like we did for the shadows so let's take that value plug it in there and view it but now instead of isolating the shadows we want to isolate the highlights so the way I'm going to do that is turn that black level way up and I'm going to leave the white light level, excuse me, all the way at white. So now the higher I turn this, the more our shadows are going to creep in. So I want it about there so we can see exactly what's going to be highlighted. And we can also change this curve. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And now we have our highlights. So that's great. And we can take that. I'm again going to mix this just so it's between 0 and 1 because you can imagine that in this picture here uh, we're gonna have some negative values or something weird going on and so adding in that mix node definitely helps so let's plug that in here and now we have our highlights isolated exactly the way we want so the very last thing that we need to do is actually determine where we want our lines and we don't actually need freestyle at first so let's drag this all the way down and I'm gonna do the lines at the very bottom first though I think these dots are a little too big just personally so I'm gonna change that to point zero zero five alright just cuz I think that's easier to look at now what I want to do 
is press shift space to go back here and I am need to add freestyle so I'm going to add another render layer and for this one under freestyle I need to add a freestyle line set there we go and also I want to turn off everything but that so use environment use services use hair I'm going to turn that all off and I'm going to render it again okay so now that it's rendered I can just duplicate this right here and change this from render layer to our freestyle node so now we have a layer that is just the lines but we won't use that quite yet we're actually going to take this image and add a filter to it so let's press shift a filter and filter and we're going to automatically detect the lines so you can use this with any sort of photograph and not just a render so let's take this from that to Sobel however you pronounce that I have no idea but then I want to take this color and invert the colors so we want our lines to be black and not white makes sense cool now we have that and finally I'm going to add another filter right here and I'm gonna leave that to soften just so we can soften those lines a little bit and turn that down to 0.75 uh, otherwise you might get some jagged edges so that'll help clean things up a bit and finally I'm just going to take this image here add another color mix node plug in our lines Oop. there we go and change that to multiply so now we can control exactly how much lines we have with this Sobel amount but what if we want to add in our freestyle node what we can do is actually just multiply again color mix take this value multiply plug in our lines oh and you also have to enable transparent backgrounds so there we have it we now have our complete node set up and it's looking good so just we can tweak things a little bit if we'd like with these black and white levels but for now I like them as they are and you can go ahead and play with these as much as you'd like so you can see that it's really not too hard to set up and you can definitely get some very cool results and again I just want to remind you that if you want a node that works right out of the box with no effort required without any of that setting up or tweaking you can just purchase it down in the link below from the blender market and then when you go to append you can go to the node group stipple paint pen that bad boy stick it right in and it works right out of the box so thanks for watching this video I hope you learned a lot and if you do purchase it thank you that'll definitely encourage me to make more videos in the future if not that's totally cool uh, whatever you want to do so thanks again for watching and I'll see you later